It's definitely not a regular through hike. That's for sure. You definitely should not underestimate this trail. Like you could fall down a canyon and potentially no one would find you for a while. I think a lot of the gnarly stuff is like really fun actually though. At least yeah. it is fun. So much more dense with cool stuff than I expected. This whole trail has been about problem solving. I didn't want to have a well-worn path to follow the whole way. I wanted to kind of figure this stuff out on my own. Everybody can find something out here for themselves. It's just about finding the thing that you enjoy doing and looking for the metaphors in it. Hike Your Own Hike is about experimenting and finding the things that fit you best. And I think that really speaks to the reason that gets a lot of hikers out here in the first place, is that they're out here for themselves. At first that might sound kind of selfish, but I think it's incredibly important to do things like this for yourself. It helps you understand yourself and make better decisions. And when you make better decisions for yourself, then you're able to help other people better too. I think hiking long trails allows you to be selfish in a way that feels a lot less selfish. Like I'm absolutely not contributing to society. I'm doing nothing that anybody outside of a very small sphere would consider productive. But the fact that there is a route that I say, can say that I'm working on and then finished gives some amount of like credibility to basically being a dirty vagrant for a while and not having to think about stuff. to think of the wilderness as a recalibration tool for my mind. It shows me where I'm at in life, what I really need, what's unnecessary, what I thought I need and I actually don't need. It helps to keep my ego in check because there is no fooling yourself out here. If you're not capable of doing something, the wilderness will show you pretty quickly and it'll put you back in your place. It's just a good way to stay in touch with reality, I found. Ever since I left the road, which was about eight miles ago, I've been walking towards that spire, which marks the beginning of my exit of this canyon. It's been a long and really sandy day, walking through the Butler Wash. The next landmark that I'm looking for will mark my exit of this side canyon. It's a small bridge that was actually unnamed until the founders of this trail discovered it, and they named it Seldom Seen Bridge. I just poured my last liter of water into my water bottles. Last night I left needles with about four liters of water and that had to last me about 25 miles. I camped last night, hiked all day today on that water and I'll probably have to camp again tonight with that. Even the water sources that are marked on our maps are almost always questionable. So you never know exactly when you're gonna find water which means that you have to carry enough to get you to the next two or three sources. And that's a lot of weight. I wonder what Fiddy would have done in that situation. He does not like the rock scrambles.
I am out of the butler wash. And what do I find waiting for me up here? Water. I am not the only one to be using this water source. There are deer prints all over the place. And that is not very clean water. <laughs> That's the first water I've seen in a day and a half and I'm almost out. So I'm gonna take that and keep going. Maybe I'll find something better, but this makes me pretty happy. <laughs> Didn't sleep that great last night because where I set up camp, there were a lot of cougar tracks in the area. They were all over the place. <laughs> and I kept having dreams that there was a cougar coming into my tent. <laughs> and that kept me awake most of the night. Well, it's amazing how much I have taken water for granted in my life. But, obviously it's a necessity, and when there is no water, and this is your only choice, that's what filters are for. It's almost too cliche to say this, but I feel like it should be mentioned at least once. And that is that through hiking and spending time in the wilderness in general, teaches us to appreciate the little things. Happiness and our well-being it doesn't come from attaining objects and money and all these external things. I think it comes from setting goals and working towards them and achieving them. You gain a level of respect for yourself and that kind of stuff gets you through the hard times. I'm kind of amazed how good of a mood I can be in even at the end of a really hard day. And that's because it feels good. I accomplished something. Finding a way out of these canyons is always about choosing between a bad and a worse route. There is never a good route that looks obvious and easy, but that's kind of how life is. You're never presented with the options that you would like to have. All you can do is make the best out of the options that you have. My initial reaction when I see these is that it's just impossible. There is no way to get up that. My second reaction is that I have to get up it, so after looking a little bit closer, I can actually see a little bit of a route that skirts up the side of this dry fall and hopefully over it. I made it out of the Fable Valley and up on top, to my surprise, I actually found a forest. Even more to my surprise, it started raining. <laughs> Well, rain if you can call it that. It's just some tiny little sprinkles, but there's water coming out of the sky. Just have another mile or two over land, and then I'll be dropping down into another canyon where hopefully there's a spring there and I'll set up camp for the night. So I'm sure I've mentioned how hard it is to get out of the canyons, but just because I'm out of the canyons doesn't mean I'm staying out of them. The only reason I left the canyon last time was to go around a big dry fall, but now I have to get back into the canyon, and this is what it looks like. This whole descent into the canyon has actually been marked very well by cairns. And that's been a first so far on this trip. Again, it's about appreciating the little things. Just a few piles of rocks placed in the right area can really make all the difference. This is the confluence of Young's Canyon and Dark Canyon. 
Listen to all that water down there. A bunch of brush pushed up against the tree there shows how high the flood mark goes and this canyon is flooding. That's above my head. Today has been a long day. Not because of the miles I got in, but just because of the terrain. These canyons are no joke. They were never made to walk through easily. <laughs> a lot of times I would come to a big dry waterfall, but it's a huge drop off and I would have to go way up and around and then back down. And those are pretty sketchy climbs and then descents because the rock is really loose and it's very, very steep. <laughs> it's looking kind of nasty over here. Just set up my tent in pretty much the highest area that I could find a place to set up a tent. As you can see right there on the tree, that's where the high water mark is for the flash floods. I hope it doesn't get that bad tonight. Well, I didn't get swept away last night, so that's good news. The thunderstorm came in and it was raining pretty hard and pretty windy. At the last minute, I actually moved my tent to higher ground, but it turned out to be not that bad. But today I just have a couple more miles left in Dark Canyon and then I'll be ascending out on a pack trail. It's supposed to be really steep and about a thousand foot ascent. The past three or four days have been really challenging, but now that I'm out of the canyons, I have a whole day of road walking ahead of me. This isn't gonna be a highlight of the trail by any means, but it gives me a break to kind of reset it's good to build in these sort of breaks, and that kind of just happens naturally in the wilderness. It's usually a few days of really difficult terrain, followed by a day or two of easier terrain. Well, this is a height marina. I'm not counting on anything actually being open, but hopefully I can at least fill up some water here. It would sure be nice if it was open really go for some fresh food right now. <laughs> There's only a gas station store and a little convenience store here anyway, but they're both closed. But there is still water running and maybe even a place I can charge some stuff. So that's really all I need for now. I just left the Height Marina. I'm heading down the road and crossing over the Colorado River on this big bridge. And then after that I'll be leaving the road again, jump back down into the canyons. But now for the rest of the way to Hanksville it'll probably be two or three days. Looks like some pretty exciting stuff but some of it's going to be real tricky again. So back into the unknown. I just found a water cache for Hayduke hikers. I was not expecting anything like that on this trail. On bigger trails like the Pacific Crest Trail, there's water catches all over the place because there's a lot of people involved, but since this trail is so new and unknown, you can't really expect much support from outside help. So that's pretty reassuring to find that. It would, yeah, coming from the big city Milwaukee and you hear gun shootings and read about them and hear about them and and you wonder what's going on and then you come out and you see all all these people out here that um, you know they'll, they'll help you sometimes if they don't want to they'll even help you <laughs> it's a uh, it's there's a lot of good people out here in this world yet another common phrase on these through hikes is that through hiking will restore your faith in humanity and it seems to be that almost everybody you run into out here is good.
It just smells lovely up here. Come to one of those places where there is only one way out of this canyon and it's up there. It didn't look doable to me at first, but they said there's some sort of chimney climb. I'm guessing it's right about there. For once it actually looks a little bit more doable up close than it did from down there. The beauty of a through hike is that it always keeps you on the move. And when you're always moving, it means you're always experiencing new things. And that's where learning occurs. The problem with regular life is that there isn't always a mechanism that keeps you moving, so it's easy to get stalled out and things can get stagnant. But out here we have a finite supply of food and water and that keeps us moving. So that time constraint keeps us trying new things and it pushes us to learn and adapt in order to overcome these challenges fast enough in order to get to our next resupply points. I just found some cowboy glyphs. A bunch of those writings date back to the 1920s or earlier. It's pretty crazy because they look like they were just carved in there yesterday. But that brings up an interesting question that Fiddy and I were talking about. At what point does it become graffiti? <laughs> because back then it was just some cowboys carving some stuff on the wall and that wouldn't be tolerated today. But now that it's old, it's pretty cool. On this wall back here, there actually was some graffiti, big spray painted name on top of all the cowboy glyphs. And that kind of sucks to see, but will that be cool in a hundred years? I don't know. <laughs> It's almost the end of the day and I am really tired. I think the miles of this whole section are starting to add up and I'm really starting to feel it in my legs and just my energy overall. I can't really eat enough either because I'm trying to ration my food a little bit so I can stretch it out for the last couple days. But before the day is over I want to get down into here. Then at least I can feel good about quitting for the day. Fiddler Cove Canyon. There are things that can be rushed and things that you need to take your time on because any sort of mistake could be catastrophic. <laughs> and out here it's pretty obvious to tell the difference between which is which. It also helps to not be distracted, so I'm going to put this away. <laughs> I 
All right, solid ground. It's dinner time. For dinner tonight, we have half a ramen packet. Half a chicken rice packet, some pink salmon, and to top it all off, Fritos. No hiker meal is complete without Fritos. I've got to say it's just kind of comforting to be walking next to a river again even though this one is called the Dirty Devil River and it's really silty and they say it's full of agricultural waste <laughs> it doesn't smell very good and it's really cold and I'm gonna have to cross it a whole bunch of times while I'm walking up this river but still just to be walking next to water it feels kind of good this is gonna be one of those days where I have wet feet the whole day but that reminds me of another advantage that traveling through the wilderness can give us. In regular life, we really have it so good that we're in temperature controlled rooms all day. We get to sit in comfy chairs and everything is kind of made for comfort. But that means that we have a very low tolerance for discomfort. Discomfort is inevitable. And out here, you're kind of in a constant level of at least a little bit discomfort. It varies from a little bit to a lot, <laughs> but you're almost never completely comfortable. What that does is that it raises your tolerance for discomfort, and that's valuable all the time because there always will be uncomfortable situations. I like to like challenge and force myself to do things like this, to get out and do it. Uh, otherwise, you know, it'd be the same all routine like almost everybody else. I really like the physical challenge of it. I kind of need to, to be exhausted to have this good feeling yeah. after it. And that's what you have here just every day. In the old wilderness, it's, that would be a tough life. Maybe I just would sit in front of the TV and watch wilderness <laughs> movies, I don't know. <laughs> I just left the Dirty Devil River for the Poison Spring Canyon. The kind of ironic thing is, even though I was walking next to water all day, it's not the kind of water that I want to drink. I'm actually still running on the last bits of water that I got from height yesterday. But that's just about out, and I'm pretty thirsty. And the next possible water source is still five miles away, but the next for sure water source is about seven miles away. So I took a liter from the Dirty Devil River, but I really hope I'm not gonna have to dip into that before I get to the next water source up here. Well, I'm at the five mile water source, potential water source, where there could be a creek. And as you can see, there's no creek. <laughs> but, there's a puddle. That's all I really need right now. There should be more water at the spring up ahead, two miles. In order to avoid getting the surface water and stirring up the silt on the bottom of these puddles. I've been using the cleaning syringe for my water filter. I have water again. That feels good. <laughs> it's actually really similar to the feeling I get when I have or I don't have money. <laughs> if I don't have enough money then I'm kind of frantic and I'm kind of freaking out and I'm working really really hard to get the money I need and then if I do have enough money it doesn't have to be a lot but just enough to be comfortable then that frees everything up and I'm able to focus on other things and it's the same way with water out here
Well, it's day number eight on this section already, and I am very ready for a town day. It's been a hundred mile section, and this terrain is just so new to me, and there has been so much effort in trying to adapt to it and learn how to navigate through it and all that. I'm just physically and mentally pretty exhausted. You should never forget that it's just, it's just really hard work to do one of these trails. Everything just sounds amazing and right. a lot of fun, but <laughs> not always. At the end, it's just you're hiking for, I don't know, 8 to 12, 14 hours a day. There's a lot of romance that goes along with hiking because people that come back and they relate to stories. And I think that's why a lot of people get involved in hiking. I think that's a lot of reason why uh, a lot of these people quit within a week. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of work. Hiking all day, 20 some miles, you know, there's a lot of tedium in that. It's just one footstep at a time. It's slow. You got to enjoy the moment. Um, you got to keep your mind occupied and your body has to be willing. I think there are also many people on trails now for the wrong reasons. It's like the movie Wild. People maybe they have just a personal problem and they expect to go on trail and everything is fine again. Yeah. Yeah. But you would probably have a worse time than if you would stay at home. I was using through hiking for a long time as a way of like hiding from a lot of personal growth that I needed to be doing outside of like addressing my backpacking fears. There are other issues I need to work on that like I'm allowed to kind of ignore because I'm on trail. When I was little my parents took me outside a lot and then I got really into video games for like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and was a software developer <laughs> and I was also into binge drinking um, and then in the last few years it's been a major shift I guess <laughs> but I guess like through hiking like provided the impetus for the shift to have a life where like every day I'm right there with nature and I feel connected to it and everyone around me kind of shares that value I was a pretty serious academic and this was kind of a good escape. Uh, I dropped out of a PhD in math, working on string theory to go chase crazy dreams and this is one of them. So if I didn't have a good escape route to go do things that I found fulfilling, I might still be doing that and feeling un unfulfilled. I have a lot of compulsive tendencies. Huh? Um, Hiking has really helped me find balance in my life. To me, it's, it's just a very valuable experience and I feel very grateful and appreciative to be able to do it. And that's why I spend half the year saving up <laughs> to be able to afford it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Sonic? Yeah. Um, I think I'm kind of a disaster off trail. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I like being on good to, Yeah, good. Glad you're here. <laughs> and I like really despise serving food, and that's my job. Yeah. And so it just like I get like very, very unhappy and can't yeah. deal with it. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. My mom says that she worries about me less when I'm on trail versus all trail. Hmm. So. <laughs> Aww, but this is where you're comfortable, it sounds like. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I'm comfortable. I'm more comfortable in this life. Huh? or this lifestyle than, than back home. So where do you think you'd be if you didn't have the wilderness? What would you be doing? What would your life be like? I'd probably be an alcoholic. <laughs> Seriously, like, the, the wilderness allowed me the escape in a healthy way, you know, to, to get my, my shit together. And it's still like, I get to the point, you know, where I get cranky about, reading the news, my morning outrages these days, and um, and my wife will literally be like, get your backpack, see you in a week, go somewhere, you gotta get out. To be honest, I've been thinking about town for the past few days, a little more than I would like to, because town can be a huge distraction out here, especially when you're starting to get close and it's been a long section and all that. You're tired and then all you start thinking about is having a good cheeseburger or a shower or maybe a real bed to sleep in or even just a zero day where you can just chill all day and relax and eat 
those are real enticing thoughts out here especially when you're alone and it can take away from the trail experience so I try not to let myself indulge in those thoughts too much while I'm out here but now that I'm only five miles away from the road I'll let myself think about it as much as I want <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting into town I'm really glad I found a way up here, but I definitely paid for it. <laughs> that was so steep, and the air is really thin, and I'm not acclimated to that yet. I think in the past couple days of trail, I've gone from like 4,000 feet to it's about 11,500 feet up here, and this is the highest point in the Henrys, I'm pretty sure.